Well, 64 DS is kind of, it's a remake, so I wouldn't say it's a sequel to a sequel, but this is basically like a sequel to Super Mario 64 DS. Also, you can only do this as Mario still, because Koopa the Quick is uh, very biased. So here we go, racing Koopa the Quick in this ROM hack. And the music is a Mario World rom uh, remix. I think. Follow me. No, wait. Yeah, it is. It's just kind of, it's really weird though. <laughs> and there we go. Break the gold tape and we're set. It even animates, like, isn't that so cool? <sighs> Your new dog is about to have puppies. So you, you got a new dog and your dog is having puppies? That's really fantastic. Congratulations. So Koopa the Quick is very lenient in this one. Like, I took the best uh, the best pathway. You just kind of go straight there. New Super Mario 64 DS DX. Ew. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Can't you switch characters mid-race? I don't know if that would work, because, like... In 64 DS, if you played the race, if you played the race as Mario, you started as Mario, or you grabbed the hat as Yoshi and became Mario, if you lost the hat by the end of the race and then talked to him, he would go, hey, where's Mario? I guess he chickened out, and then you don't get the star. So I assume it's the same way in this. And here we go, bouncing on note blocks. So this is one of the last missions in this world. We've got Coin Heaven to go to, just like in the original Mario games. And there's actually a power-up in here that I forgot about. Koopa the Quick is always slow. In Mario 64 Star Road, the one made by Skellix, uh, he is actually pretty challenging. Because, like, you don't know the pathway because it's a totally new game, and he's a lot faster and he's less lenient with you. You also need one more star coin. I'm pretty sure I know where that is. I think that's up in the area we're going to. Either that or it's down in the, uh, the underground, which we're going to next level. Next mission. Boing, here we go! So there we go. Here we're in Coin Heaven, and we get the Rainbow Star. So we go a lot faster, we do triple jumps automatically, and we have, like, this really cool obstacle course to go through. Like, this is super cool. Also, I'm... I'm thinking... Is the last Star Coin up there somewhere? No? Okay, hold on. Sorry, I was having a... I was having a thought, but it's definitely not what I need to be thinking about right now. There we go! Actually, is that the last Star Coin under there? No. Okay, I think it is in the basement. The basement. Why do I keep- I keep wanting to say the basement! It's not in the basement, it's the underground. I'm in a basement right now, it doesn't look like where we're going. How does a man jump on clouds? Uh, if you're Mario, you can do anything. Hey, Jack! What if you found out the sky was just another painting? I wouldn't be surprised, because Mario's world is comprised of very stupid landscapes that exist within paintings. And, uh, I'm starting to wonder if anything is actually real. Here we go, boys. Down to the underground. I mean, there are a few pipes you can take to go into the underground, but, uh, this one is the one they highlighted, so we'll take this one just to make it easier on them, so the game's efforts don't go to waste. How many worlds are there? There's... I, I want to say four in one bonus world, but uh, there might be a little bit more than that. Uh, here we go. I think, um... Also, we have turn blocks from Mario World, and they even function like they do in Mario World, which is pretty cool. I think, isn't it up here? Where the heck is this coin? <laughs> there it is, up there. Okay, we gotta fall down from a, a pipe up, up top, I believe. So hold on just one moment. And you might recognize this area from Super Mario Bros. 1-1. Ton more coins down here if you're doing a hundred coin star. Wait, is that platform the 3D land background or is it your imagination? Uh, it might be a reference to 3D land's background, but it, this this whole level is a big uh, throwback to like all different Mario games. Please, Mario, I need you to I need you to focus here. This is the pipe we need, I believe. We'll come down from the ceiling and we'll land right on that star coin. There we go! All star coins collected, and now we've got another challenge here. One more choice again.
Maxi, if you're still in the chat, I, I actually saw that video today on Twitter. Alright, so now we've got a coin collecting thing, which you can also do to grab your 100 coins. Since Mario 64 DS controls a little awkwardly, it is a little bit harder to do this with precision, so I recommend you, like, be a little bit liberal with your use of the, uh, the run button, because you're gonna need to do this fast, but you also need to be precise. I did this with Toad, actually, so it was a lot easier, because he's fast. Come on, just the one left. There we go, and that's our last star. 64 DS doesn't have backwards long jump. No, they removed that in the uh, the 64 DS port. <sighs> Galaxy 2 challenge reference. Yeah, that too. That area did look like uh, Galaxy 2 stuff or Galaxy. Is that everything? That's all of the stuff in Callback Mashup Land. So now we're heading to one of my favorite levels, the beach level. Actually, hold on one second. So that will spawn after collecting a certain amount of stars to this area up here. There's actually, like, this is a sub-level we can go to. And there's also the wing cap switch. <laughs> or, I mean, it's not the wing cap, it's just the power flower switch in this game. Oh no! But, uh, I think I'm gonna do this level too. Because it's pretty simple. Also, when I was playing this on my own, as far as I'm aware, there's no other playthroughs of this on YouTube that I could find. So, like, I had to find everything on my own, and I was able to, which was really great. That means, like, they hid everything, but it's not hidden so, like, so ridiculously unfairly or anything that you can't get everything. Yes! Even without a guide. That so it kind of made me... Out of my life. Because <laughs> you're too needy. <laughs> anyway, thank you again, Mike. Um, what was I saying? Uh... All right. Everything's really well hidden. Everything's well hidden, but not so well hidden that you won't find it. So here I want to be Luigi, because I need to, like, do some crazy jumps, so... There we go. I, I probably shouldn't have survived that. I, I feel like I... What is that? Uh... There we go. So now we're heading into the other area. So there are two stars in this little subsection. And I think there are only two coins as well. But, uh, we'll see in a moment. So you can either use these mushrooms to bounce up, like that, or you could- Oh, no, actually, there's a bunch of coins, never mind. <laughs> Forget what I was saying, there's, there's plenty. <laughs> never mind, okay, so that's one limited- Okay, I, I was second-guessing myself, I shouldn't do that. So this thing- Oh, jeez. If you pause the game, you'll be able to see what's in each stage. So there's two coins here, but when we were collecting the coins, the original overlay for the other levels showed. Probably because it's just some coding thing that they've got to fix. Or maybe that they can't change. Gotta eat. Uh. <laughs> there we go. So if I had thrown that shell correctly, maybe with, like that, uh, then I would have been able to get like a big wombo combo of enemies there, but we're not gonna be seeing that. Okay, hold on. There we go. Use that launch star, get back to the other side. I love this. That reminds me a lot of the warp star from Kirby, like when you grab that and you just like, cinematically fly around the whole stage. Now here is one thing you need to keep in mind. When you're jumping on these mushrooms, you can't change your camera angle. So you need to make sure that you are locked into the camera angle you need. So like here, for example, there's a platform to my right that I need to get to. And since I don't have my camera in the correct, like, angle, it's gonna be a lot harder to reach this, which... I guess it wasn't, but you know. Okay, you need to die though. You need to fall asleep and then die. There we go. A little worried there for a second. But there you go, you kill the piranha and a vine spawns, which is funny because this game does a lot of things to you. I was talking about to Davis about this. This game, you need to throw out what you know about Super Mario 64 DS because this game has so many new things in it that uh, when you... Oh god. Maxi just sent me a picture of this new Sonic design. It's freaking me out. But anyway, um... It's the eyes. I think the only thing I don't like about it is the eyes. Like, the rest of it, like, looks like a live-action movie character. But anyway. Uh... Shit, why do I keep losing my <laughs> train of thought? Um... Throw out everything you know about 64DS because you need to, like, problem-solve like this is a new game. Because when you, you do things in this game, the solutions might be really different from anything that you could do in 64DS. 
Like, for example, that piranha plant spawning that vine like it did? When I first played this, I got to that area and I saw the star up there and I was like, how the heck do I reach that? And, uh, you know, then I was like, well, whatever, I'm here, I'll kill this piranha plant. And then it spawned the vine, and I was like, duh. I, I don't know why I locked myself into the old way of thinking. Because, uh, you can't do that. Because this game is too different. So just keep that in mind, and there are gonna be a lot of things later that you need to think like that as well. And I'll point those out as we get to them. <laughs> Let's try and get this good lined up this time. Ayo! Got them all! We missed the red Koopa, though. That's too bad. You live another day, swine. No longer like Yoshi, got your taxes done. I still gotta do that. I got- I mean, my stepdad told me he would help me with it, and he usually does them at, like, the beginning of April, so... I'll be doing- I'll be doing that around then. Ooh, that was close. Okay. Woohoo! Alright, so this- we need to head over that way, I believe. Were there not two stars being shown off before? Where did the other one go? The other one was on the map, I know that. Oh no, I missed! Oh shoot. The fact that this game does so much different is still fun, really sets it apart from other show-off games like Last Impact. Oh gosh. Last Impact is cool, it has a lot of really cool things, but it is also very frustrating. This game I don't find nearly as frustrating. Where's the Grim Reaper? I don't know, man. <laughs> Alright, uh, wait, is it? It's in the waterfall area, so like on the other side, I don't know why the, the star icon disappeared when we got over there, but I just gotta remember it's over there. Just remember, guys, right on that waterfall. As long as they didn't keep Hazy Maze Cave the same, it's okay in my book. Hazy Maze Cave ain't even in here. Let's see. Imagine this in Super Mario Maker 2. Uh, that would we need a 3D Mario Maker for that kind of thing. Kind of disappointed there's no 3D Mario Maker, but that would be insanely difficult to make for them, and I feel like it'd be insanely complex for people to design with. So that's probably why that's not a thing. I mean, Kay's made Super Mario 64 Maker. The guy who made Last Impact and makes all those amazing 64 ROM hacks, <laughs> he made a Mario, uh, a Mario Maker game in Mario 64. And it works, it's just, like, I would say it's a little clunky. But, like, I mean, what are you gonna do? It's still amazing that he was able to make a level editor in Mario 64. Hey! 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 Alright, Luigi! Okay, there we go. Yoshi might be a little bit better for this, because he has the flutter jump. It's a little bit more precise. But, honestly, I think once you're in the air, Luigi having his little hover dash like that is a lot better. There we go! 